Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. My name is Natalia Motulska and this is the news. The 36th day of Russia's invasion of Ukraine has passed. The Russians are withdrawing some of their troops from around Kiev and Chernihiv, presumably to replenish their units. The Ukrainian army has recaptured Trostyanets, a town of 20,000 people in the Sumy region of northern Ukraine, from the Russians. Mariupol and Kharkiv, on the other hand, have been under almost constant bombardment over a month. The Russian army destroyed up to 15 percent of houses in 35 days of war. The city of Kharkiv is still shelled and 30 percent of inhabitants is cut off from natural gas supply due to damage to the pipeline east of the city. In the city of Bravade, Russian shelling destroyed the food storage. Frozen food was supposed to be distributed to civilians. My village is 30 kilometers from Bravade towards Chernihiv. Yes, the Russians have been there since March 8th. When they came, they shot at people they came across. They went around the houses. They were not at my place. There was a lot of bombing. Many houses were destroyed. I live 12 kilometers from here. The Russian army came there. They set up in people's backyards. Every now and then there was an exchange of fire. The Ukrainians were shooting very precisely, destroying their tanks. I heard them fly apart. For 20 days we sat with a child in a cellar. Can you imagine that? The child asks to eat and I can't give it to him, because if I come out of hiding they will shoot him immediately. They enter houses and take everything, even food. They rape our girls, even 10-year-olds. They are monsters. I thank Poland for humanitarian aid. Now I took some food and there are signs of everything. Poland, Poland, thank you very, very much. Not everybody left early. Nobody wants to leave their home. And why should we run away? After all, this is our land. It was not us who came here. On the first day of the war, military units and strategic objects were shelled. Our inhabitants felt both the explosions, the shelling and the personal losses. Before the war, Bravada had 140,000 inhabitants. From the registration of data from water or gas meters, we see that about 40,000 remain in the city. The armed forces of Ukraine, together with the territorial defense, act moderately to secure the safety of our civilian citizens and knock out the enemy. The armed forces are developing a counterattack. They are working effectively, so I hope that in the near future we will be able to completely liberate the Kiev region from the Bravada side. Southeastern city of Mariupol is besieged and constantly shelled. From the beginning of the Russian assault, approximately 5,000 people have died, including 210 children. City council assesses 90 percent of buildings damaged and and 40 percent destroyed, including schools, hospitals and factories. On March 16th, a friend of ours was driving a car and a bullet hit him straight in the throat. Five minutes later, he died. I was in that car. I took him home, but he could not be saved. We are cooking here because there is no gas, no water and no food. This is our oasis where we hid from the bombings. Ukraine Farm Agency reports that despite the difficulties, the army is fighting and repelling the enemy in many directions. The Russians have already lost over 17,000 troops, 614 tanks, 1,700 armored vehicles, 131 helicopters and 135 aircraft. Due to the bombardment, this night of attacks proved to be the most difficult for the residents of Kharkiv, Chernihiv and Luhansk regions. In three villages in the Donetsk region, the Russians used phosphorus weapons, injuring 11 residents, including four children. Almost 2,400,000 refugees have already arrived in Poland since the beginning of the Russian aggression against Ukraine. Among European countries, we are the leader in terms of accepting Ukrainian women and children fleeing from missiles and bombs. The topic of Polish aid was, among others, the subject of President Andrzej Duda's talks with the Ukraine foreign minister, Dmitry Kuleba. At the National Security Office, President Andrzej Duda spoke with the Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba, among others, about the war situation in Ukraine. The conversation between President Andrzej Duda and the head of Ukrainian diplomacy, Dmitry Kuleba, concerned the situation in Ukraine the state of Ukraine's defense against Russian aggression and the support Poland provides to its eastern neighbor. In the framework of developing an active dialogue together with the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, Polish President Andrzej Duda reached me today in Warsaw. We greatly appreciate Poland's strong support for Ukraine and its hospitality towards Ukrainians. A free and strong Ukraine means a free and strong Poland and Europe. 
Since February 24th, 2,393,000 people have entered Poland, according to the Border Guard. Only yesterday, at eight Polish-Ukrainian border crossings, officers cleared 25,500 refugees. People who are fleeing the war in Ukraine can count on all kinds of help. Border guards ask refugees what kind of help they need, whether they have somewhere to stay. If not, officers guide them to reception points. According to the UN, four million people have fled from Ukraine. I arrived here on my own. A column of about 10 cars left from my town. We arrived, thank God. The road through Ukraine is terrible. There are bodies lying on the roads and nobody is burying them. There are mines on the roadsides and one was in the middle of the road. Who knows what will happen? But children? Children have no future. It is difficult to talk about it. It would be best to go home. But how? Poland has been helping refugees in Poland and Ukrainians on the ground since the beginning of the conflict. We are doing everything and we urge our foreign partners to do so in order to support Ukraine in this fight, that is, by providing defensible equipment and weaponry, by providing humanitarian aid. The law on assistance to refugees from Ukraine stipulates that they can obtain a Polish PESEL number, which allows them to access social benefits, health services and education. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg delivered his annual report for 2021. It was the seventh consecutive year of rising defense spending across European allies and Canada, amounting to a 3.1 percent rise and 270 billion U.S. dollars extra since 2014. In the light of Russian aggression on Ukraine, the head of NATO stated that there are 100,000 U.S. troops in Europe and 40,000 more under NATO command. According to Stoltenberg, Russian forces in Ukraine are not withdrawing, but regrouping. According to our intelligence, Russian units are not withdrawing, but repositioning. Russia is trying to regroup, resupply, and reinforce its offensive in the Donbas region. At the same time, Russia maintains pressure on Kiev and other cities. So we can expect additional offensive actions bringing even more suffering. We need to judge Russia on uh, uh, their actions, not on their words, and it remains to be seen whether there is any real wi willingness from the Russian side to find a political solution. Ukraine and the West say Russia, which launched its invasion on February 24th with the aim of demilitarizing the country, according to President Vladimir Putin, has been forced to outline more modest goals after getting heavily bogged down and failing to take Kiev and other major cities. Moscow denies that was ever the objective. The Senate Law and Justice Party has collected signatures and submitted a motion to dismiss Speaker Tomasz Grodzki. The motion is related to Grodzki's scandalous statement to the Supreme Council of Ukraine and the Senate's failure to consider the motion to waive Grodzki's immunity. The Law and Justice Party's candidate for the new Speaker is its current Deputy Speaker, Marek Pank. The reason for the request for resignation is the scandalous and unacceptable statement by Mr. Grodzki in the form of an address where he attributes responsibility to the Polish government for co-financing the Putin regime. These words are undignified, disgraceful and contrary to the Polish reason of state. We could not fail to react, but of course there are many more reasons for Mr. Grodzki to resign. The second matter that is appalling to public opinion is the failure of the Senate to allow a vote on the motion to strip him of his immunity. Thank you for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But for me, it's have a great night.